Hello everybody and today on To The Garage we're dealing with a request that was sent in by one of our subscribers. Thank you so much for all the great comments that come in. Um, and this is a really good one because it's something that I want to do anyway. Uh, the question was basically can you detach the grey section of the grill from the chrome section of the grill in order to repaint it well? Um, simple answer is yes and I'll show you how to do that. Um, it intrigues me because the grey section of the grill is a sort of, we'll call it anthracite colour, metallic grey. And it's, to the best of my knowledge, not repeated anywhere else on the vehicle. You'd expect that this to be sort of a colour coded look that matches in with something else. I know my car's really filthy at the moment, but everything else is, obviously I've fitted that, is black. Um, in contrast to the grey, and that extends around the sides. I've had a good look around it. Got a few silver items, but nothing else is this colour. So, um, it's something I'm interested in swapping out for a sort of satin black anyway, and see how that makes it look. So, we've got another video. Um, if you want to go onto the NP300 playlist, you'll find a full detailed video on how to remove your grill in about two minutes. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail on that right now. I'm going to crack on with getting this off and then show you how to detach the grey from the chrome before I do my task of changing a colour on this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to remove the badge and the camera. The camera held in place with two screws. One. Two. And that's a little camera that points out the front of the car. Next, we're going to take off the Nissan badge. And the Nissan badge is held in place with four clips, all of them the same style as this one. So all we have to do is pull it away from the center and push it down very slightly. This one again away from the center and down very slightly that one's popped back in so you've got to do some of these at the same time um, the other two pull in towards the center and give a little push so I'm just going to repeat on this one and this time it's gone and then when I turn the whole thing over You can see how there are four holes, two clips. This is the ones I pushed away from the center. It's just got a bit of a barb on it. The other two are really only um, tiny. See the little barb on that one? Little barb on that one. So you're squeezing them together and these apart and you don't have to move them very far and that's your Nissan badge off and on the back here tells you the date it was actually molded 11th of May 2017 next we're going to take the uh, chrome surround off and this is I think 10 screws and a few clips and the screws are all Phillips head, cross head, call them as you like. Um, here, this is the bottom corner of the grill. So 
So that's the screws out of the grill. Now it's only held in place with a couple of clips. So um, where are the clips? There are basically three rows. You've got some along the bottom and this is one of them. There's one here. There is um, a middle row here and here. And then there is a top row and on the top there is one, two, three, four, five, six. The trick with these clips is they do tend to pop in, pop out, pop in, pop out. The very best tool you can use on this is a plastic trim removal tool, but um, I've done this lots of times and I've got a screwdriver in my hand. So you don't want to be scratching the chrome or bending anything or breaking anything, but have a straight blade screwdriver to hand and then start with this bottom row of clips and what we're going to do try and make it so it's easy for you guys to see is got this clip here and all i'm going to do is bend it down and whilst doing so pull the black parts of the grill up yeah and because i've got that up i'm just going to put my screwdriver flat blade screwdriver in through one of the gaps so that it can't jump back down. Then move over to this clip and do exactly the same thing, pull it towards me and that will now stay up. So before you leave the first row there are two black plastic lugs just sticking through at the bottom here. All you need to do is push that back a little, apply a little bit of pressure elsewhere to pull the black upwards if you like. Oops, let's try to give her an angle. It's quite awkward when you're filming. <laughs> there you go. And you get that clip to come around to your side. Just going to repeat that on the other end. That's that. Now you've reached a position where you don't need screwdriver jammed in the bottom because those black plastic clips are going to stop the whole thing from jumping. So we're up to this middle clip and potentially the toughest. The chrome piece coming through is uh, barbed, it's overhanging towards us, uh, the picture we're looking at now, and it's over the top of that little plastic clip. So you use a screwdriver to try and lever the little black clip forward so that you can push the chrome clip past it. Um, it's tricky because the piece behind it is trying to hold the barb forward. Um, so there's not a clean technique. Just knowing how it works, you'll persevere and get it out. So this is the other end. Again, you're trying to ease that black plastic forward. Try not to break anything. Um, take your time. Ease it. And if you need to get another screwdriver in there or another trim tool, fine. But a little bit of technique. Keep trying to push the chrome away. Remember, you're leaning on the chrome, so it's not going to go down. You've basically got to pull the black up. Um, and once you've got both of the clips in that sort of position, you can push your screwdriver through one of the slots and push the chrome away to help you separate the two items. By comparison, the top row is really easy. The only challenge here is actually getting two off at the same time because again they're quite closely spaced and do tend to clip each other back on. So the chrome blade that we've got sticking through is overlapping the black plastic again, it's very small barb. Um, so you can try to pull the black plastic towards you and push the chrome tab away from you and then push that barb through. But 
reality is until you've got two off, it's going to keep jumping. So there's a little bit of perseverance needed. Okay, take your time, take it steady, enjoy the challenge, don't get frustrated, and it is going to come off. It's not hard, there's not a lot of effort involved in this. It is just technique and patience. So we'll see here in a moment. I'm going to get that. That's just going to get past it, just about. The trick is now to get the next clip off before that one jumps back. If any of you have noticed a bit of a discontinuity in the sound, and I sound a little different and slurred and possibly a little drunk, I'm not. Uh, the um, microphone got disconnected during this section so I'm recording the voiceover afterwards and um, I have just got over again a wisdom tooth removed so I've got a little bit of a slurriness to me just a little tired so that's the explanation there normal service to be resumed in a few minutes as soon as you've got a couple off these clips just shoot through and the job is basically done Now, as you turn this over, again, be careful that nothing has clipped itself back on and you're going to strain anything. They have a tendency to do that. So, just moving that to one side. Nissan SRG Global, made of ABS. Good for plastic welding. Flip them over. Whoops. So, any of you guys who want to completely color code your car you could do wrapping or painting on that element for me I like the chrome so that will definitely be staying and this is the detached um, anthracite gray element of the grill um, most of it is covered up it's only this sort of gilled part and the two odd little elements at the ends that are exposed. Now I'm just having a look at this and I suspect it is already spray painted. Yep, it's not moulded in colour or anything daft like that, so that's very good news for us. As it's already spray painted, what that means is that we can paint on top of this just with a bit of basic prep and put any finish on we want. If it was bare plastic, then we're into etching it and all sorts of things to make the paint stick on. But somebody's already done that for us, so that's great. So next step is I'm going to wash this thoroughly. Just going to use plain water and a brush. So I don't want to be getting soaps and waxes on it. Okay, I've got a wet sponge and a uh, fine wet sanding block. And bear in mind, there's not a lot of this gonna be on show. And there's not a lot I can get at without being really, really detailed. All I wanna do is make sure I've got all the lumps and bumps off it, road tar, which I think is all gone. And then I'm just going to scuff up the paint where it's on show with this uh, wet and dry block just to take the gloss off. I'm not going to go mad because I want the paint as that barrier between me and the plastic. Okay, that's mostly dry. Next thing I'm going to do 
it's doing a dousing with a 70% um, alcohol spray. This will dissolve anything else that's left on it. There's the advantage of evaporating nice and easily on its own. So you haven't really got to do too much, but I'm going to get a clean cloth. Right, I'm going to put this somewhere to dry out thoroughly. In this corner I've got my little scrap heap. That's propped up on a pallet. It's in the sun. I'll leave it for a little while to make sure it's completely dry. And while we're waiting, head back to the garage or the shed. And we'll clean up the chrome surround and the badge. And for that, we'll use a bit of uh, cleaner. So it's one of my favorites. Other things are available, I'm not saying it's best, but I'm gonna use a bit of Demon Clean. Give it a good shake up. And liberal coating. An awful lot of the inquiries and comments I get about the Navara are about how do you remove this, how do you remove that, and it's generally the chrome stuff. And it seems that most of these inquiries are about colour coding the vehicle. Um, it doesn't seem that, as a rule, particularly if you're a bit of a modder and a tweaker, it doesn't seem like many of you like the chrome trim. One of the advantages of chrome trim, chrome plastic like this, is it is very, very smooth and relatively resilient you know it's going to uh, scratch and scuff up a lot less than paint so if you are into wrapping wrapping cars in vinyls all that sort of stuff then this makes quite a good substrate to do that on top of a bit like if you're going to tile your bathroom the very best thing to tile on top of is tiles this is smooth hard, non-porous. So actually, this and I've given you a good basis to do colour coding and customization on their vehicles. Some people say it makes a vehicle look a bit chintzy or too oriental, because yeah, in Japan, China, Malaysia, I think the, uh, the trend is to have more chrome on the cars, whereas Maybe in Europe we've moved more away from it. But I think it's coming back. And maybe it's my age. I just remember when I was a kid, if you looked at a row of cars, the one with the most chrome on was the best one. Simple as that. So, you know, that's how you chose between a Popular Plus or a gear. Basically, add some more chrome trim. Right, so I'm going to start rattling my cans now. Uh, I'm using plastic coat. I'm going to do um, a light dusting with the grey primer. And then we've got oops, matte super, uh, black paint, obviously. And plastic coat um, is a good brand, but the main use, reason that I have a few tins of that around me is it coats practically anything. You know, it'll stick to wood and plastics, glass if you really wanted it to. Um, rather than having lots of different things, if you're going to have a few um, basics, then plastic coat paints are pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to give it a light dusting with the primer, concentrating on the areas obviously where we're going to be able to see it. You almost want your dusting with a primer to be a bit grainy. 
you don't want it to flow so don't apply too much because it's going to give a nice key to what goes on next I think that'll do right give that three or four minutes coat number two a primer the trick with rattle cans is they spit when they start and they spit when they stop so don't stop on anything important And that's it for the primer. Top tip, if you don't want your cans to block up, after you've used them, turn them upside down and then just squirt some of the paint until you see the colour disappear and you know it's got solvent in the nozzle. Right, first coat with the, coat with the black, which is well and truly shook up. Again, same as with the primer, I'm trying to make it a dust coat really, just to make sure the next one's gonna stick. Also going to turn it upside down because the grill it's very hard to see all the different bits of it. Third coat of satin black. This time we are looking to cover it. Using matte paints is a lot easier than getting it right with gloss. It dries faster, it dries evener, no matter what you've done. Um, they're just easier to use. So uh, there's a big leap between doing well with a rattle can and matte and doing well on a rattle can and gloss. Well, we've now got the fully painted satin black grill. And it's turned out rather well, I think. Okay, so reassembly. Reassembly is actually relatively easy with this because again, these things are made for install, not for detachment. Place this panel over. And what you're looking for is getting the two big spikes to line up with the holes. Now the way to go about this is bottom first and the reason is we've got these um, tabs here which we didn't have to detach when we removed it but we'll have to attach to free fit it and they go in first. So put the bottom edge down, line up all of these clips along here with their slots but focus on this corner getting it inside the panel and ready to go through that hole hold that with your thumb roll the whole thing again position the clips Try and get everything in position, but focus on getting that the same as that into position on this side. That essentially has got us all lined up. What we want to do now is engage one of the clips at the bottom here. Let's just move that. So let's go fully home on that, pushing down until it pops. Then this black plastic clip goes in. Then move along and work your way along the bottom 
ensuring that each of the clips pops home. And they are now all in position. The big clips in the middle will sort themselves out. They are not going to miss their holes. So don't pay them any heed at all. At the top of the panel, and I apologise if these are a little hard to see, still lighting isn't perfect in my shed for this. You can just see the edge, I hope, of the chrome clip coming through that gap. And over here, we've got the screw hole and you jiggle that so that the boss lines up and squeeze this one until it latches. Easy. And again, work along to get the others in place. That one's gone on its own. Whoops. One at a time. Don't let them go the wrong side of the plastic. They could end up on the top if you're not careful. And you hear everything else snapping into place. That's the sound of the middle clips going into place on their own. So what I'm going to do now is flip it over. And already I'm very pleased because we're getting a nice contrast. And with it this way up, just check that everything is clipped fully home and that the raised bead around the edge of the grey, or black as it is now, part has come through the grill and not snagged behind it. Next, I'm going to put our Nissan badge back in. This is just a push home, uh, no effort really involved in it. So line it up with the four clips going through the holes and gently push home. And I think you'll all agree, Nissan got it wrong. All the grills should be black. And again, it's just a case of reinstall the reverse of what we did before. I'm gonna start with my camera That's it. it. All that remains now is to put the other screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, back in the remaining holes. And there we are. I don't think anybody can deny that looks magnificent. And few will deny it looks better. I really can't work out why the metallic grey. Okay, so reinstallation again. I got a video two minute removal of your grill from your Navara. Check that out for the details. But the salient point is don't try and refit it the way that you took it off, it will take you forever. Get these clips that you used a screwdriver to release and remove them from the car and fit them to the grill. Don't forget to reattach your camera. You can fit it once you've got everything installed, but so much easier to do the electrical connection at this stage. And with that technique of fitting the clips to the car, sorry, to the grill, you just position when everything's right, you just give it a hard shovel. That's it, fitted. leaving your top rivets. Again, check the other video for details on these. Get them wrong, you break them. Use them right, they're brilliant. Literally just a couple of hours work to transform the look of your Navara NP300.
So there you are, guys. Uh, another one of the requests done. Can you remove the the grey coloured plastic part from the chrome part on the grill? Yes, you can. Can you repaint them? Yes, you can. Is it easy? Yes, it is. Um, loving getting all your comments. Please come and keep them coming. If you're enjoying what's on this channel, then it would really help me out if you chose to subscribe. Cost you nothing. Uh, if you click the little bell icon that appears after you click subscribe, then you get a little notification ping that tells you when there's new stuff coming out on the channel so that you can check it out and hopefully comment and get involved. Um, see you again soon on To The Garage.